Jagged Alliance, back in action. V1.13G. From the start it was obvious that this is a terrible product. It got really negative reviews so it got discounted really soon. Just a year later I've bought the complete bundle with all the DLCs and the newly released Crossfire at a low price. Yep, it was absolutely dreadful even beyond just being a real-time game in a turn-based IP. But this many years later, the kids who were gifted this instead of dishonored by their senile grandmas for Catholic Jubilee Day, grew up, hit 25 years of age, and started to develop old people dementia, when you replace your current life with nostalgia. And Yankees love underdog and redemption stories. So the combined effects of that and of filtering out people who can refund this, limiting the sample only to people who like the game, results in this product having extra positive reviews on Steam. Hoarders like me, who know it is terrible, yet still have bought it, and even played it, are in the minority. This is a dead game so an influx of people not predisposed to give it a positive rating is unforeseeable. You can just compare the total number of its ratings after 10 years, 900, you probably know that many people IRL, to the number of ratings JA3 got in less than a year, 6,500. So just like with other gaming redemption stories of No Man's Sky and Oblout 76, <laughs> it is just as terrible today as on the release. To get this out of the way, this is not even a new game. This is just a it is a remake of Jagged Alliance 2, a turn-based tactics game which is also one of the best games ever made, once you survive the early stage. So of course this terrible reboot is a real-time garbage. Garbage as in genre, because it is not a real-time tactical game either. It's neither a Commando-style game, nor a Soldiers of Anarchy-style game. This is more like a bad real-time party CRPG, with no good parts. You just send your party from the third-person high-up view, and click on an enemy for the AI Game Master to roll the dice against Thacko for you. There is no gameplay, and it's worse than fighting cliff racers at level O. You can't even create your own character for this CRPG. Jagged Alliance 3 is already an RPG, but that has proper income management, equipment management, territory control, healing system, and of course skill training. Because in this one you do not train skills, you get XP by doing all the CRPG actions like healing, repairing, questing, breaking and entering, or killing. Then you get your level ups and distribute few points into stats. With characters' primary stats influencing all the skills, why would you even waste your limited points on skills? The level cap is just 10, 7 points per level, and mercs come already with several levels invested, so you just need to pour every point in dexterity then marksmanship, with two specialists taking over mechanics and healing. Mercs don't need salary, they all are forever hires, so you can just invite the entire AIM. Well, at least the mercs who don't have a beef with each other. You can camp in a money-making spot in early game, until you assemble your dream team, covering all three bases. There's no Merc order management, so you can be stuck with such comedy gold as Polish Guy Steroid doing that Hollywood comedy Schwartz and Egger parody voice for every bark when you move the whole squad. I do that. I'll do it. Okay. I do copy. I hear you. I do that. I do copy. I do copy. Okay. I'm on it. But you don't really even need to have high stats in heals or repair either. You can always survive on the trash you forage or buy in numerous local shops. Oh, and there is literal trash everywhere. For some reason you can keep all the spiders and cockroaches in the game in your pocket. The healing and repairing items come in several types, each tier locked behind a stat check. Gun lube oil is used at low skill only for superficial damage. Medium kits for medium damage and big kits to repair guns of any level of damage. But all meds heal equally. The only advantage the biggest kit with stat check of 80 medical has is density. The lowest tier kits still can heal anything but wounds and bleeds. Both healing and repair are not things you do in overworld while camping. You just use an item on an item and magically get the result. No pressure to let your bandaged but near dead guys rest anymore, just feed them med kits like it's doom. Grenades basically suck. The enemies just move away from gases, and in real time, they also run away from explosives. But not you, if you see an explosive being thrown at you, your dummies will waste a ton of time shifting their body weight, instead of scattering like the enemies do. Also, 
throwing a grenade takes a ton of time and instantly shows the thrower through all the solid walls to everyone on the map, no matter the distance. M79 was created to deliver explosives fast and far away. Here it's extremely imprecise, usually exploding in your hands, has very low range and takes forever to squeeze the trigger. The rocket weapons are even worse. Instead of being fun experimental sci-fi weapons, rocket rifles use M72 rockets and can't hit anything. The best use of them all is to just sell them in the nearest shop, especially if you've already dealt with all three and a half tanks present in the game. And shops are everywhere. Random guys are having more guns and ammo than Queen's Army, and are also willing to give you a buck for every cockroach and every bag of someone's garbage you bring them. Buying from a shop is way better than trying to shop online, you don't have to wait for delivery. Since you can't repair armor and clothes you have to constantly buy new ones from the stores, and they restock fast. Different clothes colors have different camo types, so in theory you should have different sets for different tactical maps. But you don't have a truck to haul so many items, and camo doesn't work anyway, because there's no real sight system. The game doesn't properly explain night vision or sunglasses either. There are kits integrated into helmets, but you can put another one into the face slot. What happens when you use opposing kits? Do they cancel each other? There's no fog of war, there are no any GUI elements for visibility or vision. And there's no difference if a merc can see an enemy or not. If your spotter sees an enemy, everyone does. There's no blind shooting or shooting at sound signatures. At least you can see the items being displayed on your dudes, so that's the best part of this game. But since everything breaks it's meaningless too. You can't just dress everyone in a suit with a fedora, or color code the squad slash roles to be easily readable from a glance. Things just break and are constantly replaced, so the dudes either always look like mismatching clowns or wear non-functioning items. In JA2G11 was a magic gun given to you with barely any ammo just to let you know it exists IRL. Here you must buy one for each of your guys and you can get as much ammo as you only want. It's an ultimate weapon with zero downsides. Guns have arbitrary range, so early guns just refuse to shoot. Sniper rifles take so long to aim they are useless. And Barrett takes the longest, while unable to even kill a dude from one shot. It's literally useless. But not G11, it has the best aim speed, rate of fire, accuracy, and armor penetration. It melts away the enemies and the magazine capacity is extreme. Your one dude with it can ambush like 10 plus enemies easily, while every other gun gets annoying past the early game, because armored enemies don't receive any damage. And rate of fire is important in this game, because it interrupts the actions. Before you get G11, having your entire squad just shooting full auto in enemy's vague direction is way more effective than placing well-aimed shots. Sheer volume of fire kills everyone faster than trying to aim and be interrupted. There is only one attachment slot for guns, and there are only five attachments. Silencers are used only as a thing to sell, because stealth is absent entirely. There are two scopes, and two red dots. A weak and a strong version each. Scopes are literally useless, so you just install the strong version of red dot on every gun type. On your every one gun type, the G11 because it makes your dudes make the first shot faster. Also these attachments are not even attached. You place them in Merc's inventory slot, not gun's inventory slot, and they automatically detach if you are trying to move your gun. You can't even swap a gun if you don't have an empty inventory slot for the attachment. This is just terrible real-time tactics mechanics. And that's not all. Instead of blowing up buildings, now you are allowed only to make holes in some of them. And most of the time, it's plain useless. You can't even use C4 against the tanks or enemies. Your dudes can't climb roofs. You are allowed to climb only a couple of buildings in the entire game which have ladders. You can try to lay an ambush there, watching how enemies just climb in a conga line to look at your machine guns, but mostly roofs are just grenade magnets because the enemies always can throw one with a perfect accuracy. Corners of higher buildings are way better ambush spots for stupid AI its grenades bounce and fall back. Being prone is a significant boost to accuracy, but all the maps are made of tiny bumps and so your dudes refuse to shoot most of the time, despite obviously having a line of fire. The land has flat textures and lighting, so it's impossible to read the elevation from sight. It all looks flat and smooth like Flat Earther's brains. To see anything you have to lower the stupid camera, and it moves in idiot devs mode, 
one predetermined curve controlled with mouse wheel. You can't freely control the camera to make it comfortable. There's only rotation and the terrible curve that offers either terrible FOV forward while looking at the ground, or terrible FOV from up above, with which you can see at least something from an almost top-down perspective. The rest of the controls is also terrible. It all is absolutely insane, and is unrebindable. You can't even look them up, you have to have the manual open before you. No hover over tooltips, either. Escape is not, escape. There are no buttons for save slash load, no tactical buttons to face or to strafe. There's no swapping weapons, and no secondary slot. Everything is insanely bad, and made by mad men. This came out after Silent Storm, but it has worse controls and GUI than Jagged Alliance 2 and UFO combined, and those are old low-res games. The maps do not correspond to global map sectors. Sometimes you attack a small shed, but when the map loads you realize that the local map consists of multiple overworld sectors. Other times you attack a city, and when the map loads it's just a shed near the city and a giant amount of nothing, so you are forced to go on foot to that shed. And this game has a ton of waiting for dudes walking. If you have some stuff in the inventory they will complain that a pack of bandages is too heavy and will barely shamble. Oh, and running is not automatic, it's a stance that makes dudes shoot without aiming. So you always have to keep track of that too. You waste more time on menial tasks here than in a turn-based game, where you have to manually change direction of sight. Just to piss you off your squads only move in circle formation, in this game where idiotic unit AI will gladly shoot each other in the back with no reservations or any indication. Anything you do you have to do manually but your idiots will start pushing each other automatically. You can send three dudes in three separate ways, but they will invent a new way to get stuck inside each other. And of course in this game NPCs will try to block every doorway with no way to push them away. And often your idiots just get stuck in terrain, moonwalking in place for no reason. Your dudes, but not the enemies. For the enemies, there are no rules. Sight was patched in as an optional game mode later, so of course I've played with it, but the enemy AI still runs on old algorithms with no sight simulation. AI is blatantly cheating, and it cares less than a honey badger. AI goons just run at you full height shooting birdshot from shotguns from the hip across the entire map and one-shotting your prone camouflaged guys behind cover in full armor. AI can spot you without looking. AI shoots through cars. AI will kill you through three solid walls. AI can climb inaccessible terrain and drop inaccessible items on death. AI can prevent you from saving the game by camping in one place. AI can pull your defenders from the sector they defend into a neighboring sector with 100 goons through an impassable river. Without your every guy being stronger than 10 enemies, you can't make a game about few versus many. And without turns enemies just bum rush you in real time. This is a game where you use six barely functioning guys against an almost 100 cheaters running at you. Yes, you can hire almost the entire AIM, but it is still less people than there are enemies in a sector. And it will be impossible to control, since the squads are limited to six mooks, and you control only one squad at a time. Then each hired merc needs leveling with EXP, because there's no training. 100 cheating enemies just run at you as a blob one-shotting on the run with early game trash weapons your 6 end game level 10 dorks, while spamming grenades like a B-17 flying fortress. The only way to win in this game is to abuse the enemy AI any way you can and to constantly be save loading, which also resets the AI. The damage numbers are randomized and unpredictable. The game has no full drop, which isn't very tactical, in it. No, that was not good in JA2 either. Arguably the lack of full drop is what makes JA2 early game not very good. Your pistols can't hit anything, but enemies start to use rifles and submachine guns way before you find even one. Also BIA has another JA2 problem, a big variety of early game guns, which all are absolutely useless, just to create an illusion of choice. But unlike JA2 there's barely any choice for the late game. Even if we forget that G11 is the only reliable gun in the game, your semi-viable options for the late game are very limited. You have a lot of 5.56 guns with the range below 30 meters, but most of the fights happen outside their range. Especially considering that enemy AI doesn't know the meaning of the word range. While the game running in real time means you won't tear your hair out waiting for militia to suck and die in tactical battles, you defending the same spot for hours upon hours, 
120 hours for me, is no any better. Instead of training militia in overworld, you have to find volunteers and give them a gun, camo, an armor, and a helmet. In freshly conquered sectors there are barely any volunteers, while the enemy already sends 12 goons at a time to attack the sectors. This militia is entirely useless, no matter which guns you give them. If you train them to the max level, give everyone a barret and the best armor, they will stand in one place and wait to die. If you are not looking, the game calculates the math for militia fights instead of simulating them so few guys with broken axes will take on superior and better equipped forces. With losses. And losses means that you won't get a new volunteer for some time and that you will have to go and buy a new full set of armor and a new gun and then train that meatbag for money. You can have only a few militia at minor locations, but the numerous enemy forces will attack those as gladly as the cities. So you have to constantly find more money for the best equipment and training for militia and also keep a merc as a courier to haul all of that. Or you can let the enemies take all the locations, and then multiply in them from one to a full house through abiogenesis. That's why the only viable option to defend the cities is to do it yourself. All attacks are originating from the same point, the queen's bedroom. Early on I've got a quest from the doctor to clear out Sam sites, and one of them is near the last city on the path of enemy raids. Since there's no auto-resolve option I was stuck defending that Sam site every five minutes for tens of hours. Even filling that side with mines was not enough, the enemies reproduce faster than the shop refreshes its wares. And you can't send your online purchases to the second airport, because what was possible to make in 1999 is just so oh, oh, oh hard to recreate on superior hardware. Especially when you are violently lazy and morbidly incompetent. Keeping that one location defended meant all other locations were safe from attacks and didn't require any militia. I also saw that someone discovered a galaxy brain tactic, you can just rush to the queen's bedroom and kill everyone there but her. If you leave the sector it will be considered yours and the attacks will stop forever, allowing you to properly enjoy the rest of the game. I did rush it with Sydney solo on hard, so yes that is doable. With that I've got the achievements for hard difficulty victory and for a fast run. I've cleared the first map, optionally, took diamonds from the down chopper and from the water station, cleared the Baleem slum, sold everything, got a G11 and ammo, went to the maze, crawled at the edge to the other shore, went to the global map and then went to palace to kill the queen. I never got the De Honko serial achievement during the main game, because it wasn't there. And well I searched all the places with this new hard mode save and it wasn't there either. Some time after the release the devs just broke it. The quest item was spawning in the same place, but they made it randomized, with an option for it to never even spawn. I was creating new games, hiring Grunty and Igor and checking all the spawn places, and it took me about 10 new games before I finally got the item. After which I've cleared Baleem with G11. Anne. The quest house is locked and there's no key. I had to farm many more levels until I've got Igor to finally open the door with lockpicks. Game design is my passion. For a tactics game with attempts at gun porn this is pathetic. AK is called AK-47 and it uses 5.45 by 39 ammo. AKM uses a picture of plastic collapsible AK. It shoots 762 by 54R. VSS uses 9 by 19 instead of 9 by 39 and the game uses the word clip everywhere. Also the game uses Popinker's photo with a sensor bar on eyes as a poster. This new story is actually an old story. This is a remake of Jagged Alliance 2 but way worse. All of the adventure game puzzles are removed, the ones that are tied to remaining quests are replaced with automatic check. Half of the interactions are gone, half of the locations are gone. The cities are not five houses strong anymore, now they are two or three houses big. A lot of Memoberry characters are transferred here, but their quests are removed. Could have as well make new NPCs which wouldn't remind you of a better game. The ending really sucks. It's a bad cutscene with some voiceovers from Mercs and they all are poorly done. Why would you need a story remake of JA2 if there was barely any story to begin with? The only good addition here is the cutscene of the attack on Omerta, modding this cutscene into JA2 is a good idea. But then, there's no Omerta in this stupid game. And of course in 10 years no one has found the time to fix all the bugs. The game has broken mouse acceleration. It randomly just turns on negative acceleration and makes your mouse to move through Kiesel. And of course it crashes all the time. 
on my 10 900k 3080t 32 ram nvme 4 ssd on medium settings i was often getting stuck at 20 fps in this ancient game which even on release looked like it's from the late 90s and that bug where items don't appear on the corpses until you reload is really annoying urban night desert jungle specialist kit dlc once you free the airport you get these a camo shirt and a low-tier camo gun each shirts will break fast and the guns which are better than pistols have no ammo you can't sell them and by the time when you have enough 5.56 ammo you already have much superior endgame 5.56 guns jagged alliance back in action shades of red shades of red is a big standalone map you deploy with two goons and barely any weapons you start by playing it like a bad commandos clone sneaking around and taking the enemy patrols one by one. Then you get guns and fall back into the BIA gameplay rhythm of setting up Overwatch and forcing the stupid AI to run into your line of fire or playing peekaboo behind a low cover. The worst part is that the most of this map is indoors and aggressive stupid roofs obscure everything. With the map's stupid geometry, even the same story is often randomly separated into different roofs which refuse to go away. And you can't aim at the enemies which are already shooting you, if a roof is in the way. Yeah. This is no UFO. Or Jagged Alliance. It's just an hour or two more of the same content. Jagged Alliance, back in action, Point Blank DLC. Point Blank is a standalone big map with many enemies. It is roughly separated in two parts. There's a big open section with block posts and then there's the mansion itself. You start the map with three dudes and barely any resources. Two have rifles and are surrounded by a lot of enemies. The third one is on the other side of the map and has a gun and a knife available. Using him you need to play this like commandos and catch as many patrolling singles in your area as you can. Then you get access to the stash and a cellar. Attacking from two sides you can join the forces and get access to the other stash. With a sniper rifle you can clean up the roofs and lure more enemies into an ambush. Then you recruit another dude. With four guys and plenty of weapons, the gameplay goes back to the BIA routine. Even with all buildings having closed unbreakable doors to prevent you from entering, this map is probably the most tactical experience out of the whole BIA. For the first time I found a use for all the types of weapons. Knives, pistols, shotguns, snipers, SMGs. Even the grenade launcher was really useful in the end. But even when showing its best possible side, this is still just BIA. The camera is not good, the controls are not good, the roofs are handled poorly. And this Bugatron was crashing all the time. Opening AIM crashed the game. I've got a crash after slowly sniping for almost an hour without saving. I was getting more random crashes at random intervals. When I've took over one checkpoint, Enrico wrote me a letter congratulating on taking over Drassen Airport. With both DLCs completed, I decided to finish the remaining achievements. I already did all the hard ones, only the stupid grind has remained. For 100,000 cash, I've saved after cleaning up the last location. I opened the sector's inventory and got my $450. I was repeating that while playing YouTube on the second screen to get my last tens of thousands. I wasn't using Melee that often, but I still had some numbers. And then the DLCs are set up for more melee kills. To get the remaining kills I started a new game, I've hired Bull, Steroid and Magic, saved the game, and cleaned up the first map several times with melee only. For breaking walls I went to Estony, planted C4 everywhere I could, saved, pressed the button, loaded. And after several loads I've got all the achievements in a broken game, which I hate. This is my life. This is how I chose to live it. Even by the standards of its release date, the game assaulted you with graphics and interfaces looking like absolute crap. The faces are ugly as all hell. It looks worse than games that are nearly 10 years older. The original had funny gory canned death animations to rival Fallout. This here just looks boring. The only good part is the depiction of clothes. Rate me sideways is this product sad shit or what?